Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart. Christ be within me, Christ be below me, Christ be above me. Never to part. Christ on our right hand, Christ on our left hand, Christ all around us, shield in the strife. Christ when we're sleeping, Christ when we're sitting. Christ, when we're rising, light of the light. Christ, be in our hearts, thinking about life. Christ, be in all times, telling of God. Christ, be the vision. In eyes that see light, in ears that hear him, Christ ever be. Thank you, Rebecca, and a warm welcome to church this morning, be it here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. It is lovely to see everybody. When we journey with God, anything is possible. We are challenged to push our limits. When we walk closely with Jesus, anything is possible. We are reminded that everyone has their own story to tell. And when we welcome the Holy Spirit, anything is possible. And so we're going to worship God with our first hymn, which is the Lord, I lift your name on high. And it's from CH4558. Now it is just music. The words will come up on the screen. So we can actually stand and sing. So let's hear how we can raise the roof a bit with Lord, I lift your name on high.
that was quite fast, wasn't it? <laughs> and I'm not a singer, but I do enjoy singing, so hopefully you didn't hear me, though. But we've got some words to start us thinking, and actually, Leslie uh, chose the, the, the video clips, and she did really well with that one, because we're thinking about bread and Jesus being the bread of life. And so I, I, I saw wheat when that, when that was blowing. I think it was just grass, but to me, in my head, it said wheat. But we'll have our first slide for words to get us thinking. So we're, we are thinking about bread and Jesus being the bread of life. So we have a, a lovely wheat field in the glorious sunshine. And so before we can make bread, we need something to start with. So we need to have the plant itself and let it grow and watch it grow in golden. And actually, I noticed the other day that some of the fields have been harvested. So that tells me autumn's on its way, which I'm not too happy about. But uh, if the summer's getting past, but that's a nice golden beet. We'll have the next slide. Please. So once you've got your grain, you need to winnow it. And this might be a little bit difficult for you to see, but it is the, the, the grain and you're getting rid of all the, 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 the rubbish. So you just are left with the good grain there. And you need that some, the next process. And, and once you've harvested, once you've cut down your grain. So next slide, please. And then once you've got your grain, you've got to get it into flour. And so to have the flour, you need to pound it. And that is really hard work. So here we see uh, a mother and her daughter. And they, well, I think the daughter's been the one that's getting left to pound the flour. And I don't know if any of you have ever tried to do that. It's very hard work. You certainly would get strong shoulder muscles. You wouldn't need to do a gym workout if you're pounding uh, grain to make it into flour. So it is hard work. Next slide, please. And then you've got your flour and you make it into a dough and then you have to knead it. And that's another workout for your arms, for all you bread makers. If you're doing it without a machine, then it is hard work. So you get that and you, you knead your bread until you've got a good dough. Then if it's bread that needs to rise, if it's got yeast in it, then you let it prove. And then you can put it in the oven. And the last slide, please, is hopefully you get a nice crusty loaf like this. But as you can see, We've had a quick run through on the processes of bread making and it is very laborious and it is hard work. And so when we're thinking about Jesus as the bread of life, you know, he has went through trials for us. You know, he's, he's grown up, he's learned his trade as a craftsman, as a carpenter, and then he went on to do his teaching and he was crucified on the cross for us. So he went through a very difficult life so that we could have blessings at the end. So when we think of him as the bread of life, let us think of the sacrifice and the process that he has gone through for us. And we will then think about the blessings that he has given us later on. So as we are thinking on Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us, let us draw near to God in prayer. Let us pray. We thank and praise you, Lord God, that despite our assumptions and judgments and the way we sometimes treat others, you never stop loving us. Bread of life. You are always with us. We praise you that as we draw near to you, you quench our thirst and satisfy our hunger so that we never need hunger or thirst again. Thank you that you equip us and resource us with everything we need for this journey of life. We thank and praise you, Lord God, when we make wrong assumptions about others and judge the way they live, forgive us, Lord, for limiting people and possibilities. 
when we don't allow others to speak out and be the people you have called them to be. Forgive us, Lord, for limiting people and possibilities. When we cast judgments on particular communities or neighbourhoods that are different from ours, forgive us, Lord, for limiting people and possibilities. Let us journey together towards wholeness and healing, knowing that only God can sustain us and set us free. And now let us join together and say the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading continues to follow the lectionary readings and it's from John chapter 6 and it's verse 35 and then verses 41 to 51. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And then from verse 41. At this news, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling amongst yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. And so we are going to continue our worship with the hymn, Look Forward in Faith. And it can be found in 234 in the hymn book, but Look Forward in Faith. Let's enjoy singing it.
So we are thinking about bread quite a lot this morning. And there is a story about a man who had just moved into town and stopped at the local restaurant for his dinner. The waiter did his best to please him, but the man complained that he'd only received one piece of bread with his meal. So the waiter promptly brought him four slices. The man said, that's good, but not good enough. I love bread. So the customer left a sizable tip and was otherwise a very likable patron. So the next night he was given six slices of bread with his supper. And he said, good, but aren't you still being a little bit stingy? The next night he received a basket full of bread, but he still complained. So finally the owner had had enough and being a bit mischievous, he baked one huge loaf of bread that was six feet long, three feet wide and took the manager and two waiters to carry it to the table. They then just stood back, smiled to wait for the man's reaction. So the customer looked at the gigantic loaf of bread and said, so we're back to one piece again. So what quantity of bread do we need to be satisfied? Is it lots of little, little pieces or is it just one big piece? Jesus offers us spiritual bread. And so I would like to think, certainly for me, I would like it probably in little small pieces rather than maybe one big piece that I get fed with little bits constantly. I suppose I, I'm probably a grazer actually when, when I think of food, I could just eat all day, but little bits. Whereas rather than one big chunk that you need to absorb, I think. So Jesus feeds us our needs. But bread is very cultural. Everybody, I think most people love bread and it is a very staple form found throughout the world. Every nation, as we know, has their own sort of forms. In Mexico, they have their tortillas, the Jewish have their matzah bread. But here's a few facts about bread. A family of four can live for 10 years on bread produced by one acre of wheat in one growing season. Now I've read this somewhere, you can check out whether it's true or not. But since bread was the traditional everyday necessity of life, to earn one's living was to earn one's bread. Therefore bread became synonymous with money. And so we sometimes call money bread or dough. In the 13th century, it was a vital source of food for the British and bakeries had total control of the bread supply. So in those days, loaves were often sold in baskets of 12, but some bakers would cheat their customers by scrimping on the flour and selling smaller loaves. There was a medieval law introduced which punished bakers who cheated people. And these punishments include beatings or possibly jail time. Obviously, this made cheating very dangerous, but even honest bakers were concerned they might accidentally make a smaller loaf on an occasion. So just to be safe and avoid punishment, the bakers began selling their customary 12 loaves and add one extra loaf, so making it 13 rather than 12, just to be on the safe side. And that's where we get our baker's dozen being 13 loaves. But back in the days of Jesus, bread was very important. Nowadays, we get a loaf of bread, you go down to the grocers, and I need to go today because I, I went to the cupboard and I thought I've used the last bit, but we just go to the shops. I know there'll be plenty in the shops later on. But back in the days of Jesus, it could take the best part of a day to grind the wheat, put enough wood on the fire and had to gather the wood first, to bake the bread, no stoves with the right temperature to say that's the correct temperature to cook your bread, prepare and cook all you needed for a week. So it was really very labor intensive and took a lot of effort to make. And then we have Jesus coming along. And if you read the story before the one we've just read, it's the, it's the feeding of the 5,000. So you have Jesus then comes along, feeds 5,000 people with five small loaves and two fish. And when it was all over, he had the 12 baskets of leftovers. 
So people were very impressed with this miracle. And he then just ups and disappears. And they, people want to find him. And when they did find him, they wanted really more bread, but Jesus wasn't going to give them any more. In answer, he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Now, this might seem an odd thing to say when the crowd are really looking for more bread to be fed. And he's not giving them that. He's turning it into a teaching session. And he's saying, I am the bread of life. What does that mean? And it's interesting that Jesus doesn't say, I am the giver of bread. He says, I am the bread. And could it be, he says it this way because... The problem here is that the crowd have come looking for Jesus because he had given them what they wanted. They wanted bread, but they didn't necessarily want Jesus. But they wanted what they saw as physical, you know, they, they wanted the, the physical gift. And there is another story, and it's about a father, and he had an insight into a similar situation. He traveled frequently to speaking engagements. And when he did, he would buy gifts at the airport for his children. But eventually the children became so used to the gifts that they couldn't wait for him to leave home. So he would buy them more gifts on return. They began to want the gifts more than they wanted him. And the father found that his children had gotten to the point where they thought they could do without him as long as they could get the gift or the blessing from him when he returned. So when Jesus says, I am the bread, he was saying to the people, they couldn't get the blessing without him. I am the bread. I can give you the bread, but you can't get the bread without me. Essentially, without Jesus, we're not going to get the blessings from God that God wants to give us. In Ephesians, Paul writes about all the blessings we have received from God because of Jesus. We have the blessings of being children of God and being special to him. And we have received his spirit as a guarantee of our salvation. But all those blessings are spiritual blessings. Remember the hymn, count your blessings, name them one by one. I did think about it this morning, but I wasn't sure whether it was still available or not. But when we think of that hymn, what kind of blessings do you think about? Is it physical blessings? God blessing us with a car or a home or a job. And there is nothing wrong with being thankful for our physical blessings, being grateful for what we have. But if a dependence on those kind of blessings is why we have faith in Jesus, then what happens if we lose them? Do we lose our faith as well? And the best way to, is to recognize these are all gifts from God and to be thankful for them. Jesus is the bread of life. With him, we can receive bread and other gifts. But without him, those gifts mean nothing. Jesus said almost exactly the same thing when he declared, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, you're not going to get my blessings without me. It's a package deal. They come together. And Jesus, when he's talking about the bread, it's not the real bread. He's saying, I am the bread of life. But it's meant that when we look at the bread, we remember that we need the bread to live, but we need Jesus in our lives to live too. We need Jesus to survive in the world. And Jesus said things like this at other times. When he spoke about the vine, he was saying, I am the vine. Was he saying he was a little vine? No, he was saying that every time you see a vine with the fruit on it, you need to remember that the fruit depends on the vine for life. Remember, I am your vine and you depend on me for life. When I am a gate, he wasn't saying he was literally a gate. He was saying, remember, 
just as the gate can keep bad things out and allow good things in, he can be our gate, keeping some bad things out and letting good things in. So Jesus wasn't talking here about real vines, real gates, or a real bread. In his teaching, he was talking about his sacrifice on the cross. And notice what Jesus said in John 6, verse 49. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Bread gives life. And like physical bread, Jesus' body on the cross was going to give life. The bread is there to remind us of what Jesus has done for us. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Max Lucado makes an interesting observation about this. And he writes, consider how bread is made, which was what we were talking about at the beginning of the service. Thinking about the process, wheat grows in the field, then it is cut down, winnowed and ground into flour. It passes through the fire of the oven and is then distributed around the world. Only by this process does bread become bread. Each step is essential. Eliminate the plant and you have no wheat. Eliminate the winnowing and you have no flour. Eliminate the fire and you have no product. Eliminate the distribution and you have no satisfaction. Each step is essential. Jesus experienced each part of the process of making bread. He grew, he was pounded because he was abused by authorities and he died on the cross. But just as each is necessary for regular bread, so also was it necessary for Christ to become the bread of life. He suffered for us. Jesus is our bread of life. So let us serve him and make the most of all the gifts we have been given. And so throughout into this week, let us think about the blessings we've got and the gifts we've been given and how we can use them to fulfill the purpose that God has given us here in Dunfermline. And so now, as we come to pray for others in the world, this week's prayers have been taken from Roots Material. Um, but we'll ask God to help us see from the people's perspective, rather than us maybe making assumptions. So let us draw near to God in prayer. Let us pray. all-seeing and ever-loving God. Help us to see others as your children, cherished by you. Lord, we lift to you our world leaders. It is so easy to be critical of them, to believe what we read in the papers or on social media, rather than seeing them as people just like us, with needs like ours, in an increasingly unstable world. We ask you to give them wisdom and integrity. Help them to put the needs of their country before their own desires. And we pause for a moment in silence now as we try to imagine what it must be like to walk in their shoes. All seeing and ever loving God, Help us to see others as your children and cherished by you. We pray for countries at war or suffering long periods of unrest, particularly Afghanistan and the Middle East. It is so easy for people to take sides and fight rather than try and see the world from the perspective of others. We pray that a new desire to love and treasure others may sweep this planet, bringing in a new reign of peace. All seeing and ever loving God, help us to see others as your children cherished by you. Lord, we pray for our communities 
and all who live and serve in them. We thank you for those who sweep our streets, empty our bins and clean our shops, workplaces and hospitals. We pray for your strength and reassurance for our overstretched NHS and for tired teachers trying to have a summer break. We pray for the unemployed and those on zero hour contracts struggling to make ends meet. And Lord, we pray for the only, the people overlooked by society or considered insignificant. We ask that we, as a church, may find ways to help the disadvantaged in our communities in the short term, whilst praying that our government may have the courage to find long-term solutions as made in your image with equal worth. All seeing and ever loving God, help us to see others as your children, cherished by you. Finally, Lord, we commit to those who live around us. We picture them in our minds, now as we bring them to you for blessing. Our friends, our neighbours, the people who walk their dogs past our house, those we say hi to in the street or at the station or on the bus, but don't know their names. We pray for those who live behind closed doors that we never see, those we used to spend time with, who, for whatever reason, we don't see anymore. And we pray for those whom we avoid. Lord, you know them all by name, and we thank you for each of them and for the way they touch our lives. Give us the grace to be good neighbours, willing to go the extra mile for all these people who are, underneath it all, just the same as us. All seeing and ever loving God, help us to see others as your children, cherished by you. Help us to serve one another because we are all made in your image. Help us to bring your love to everyone we meet this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are a few intimations. Next week, there is a pulpit swap, which you might be quite glad about, but Muriel will be here next week and I will be at St Andrew's Erskine. The seating, oh, you, you will notice a slight change. There are a lot more hearts around. So we can do a lot more loving. But the seating will change on the 22nd of August. We, although we have sought for approval, we need the Kirk session. The Kirk session will meet uh, after the service next week. I think I'm right in saying that. And then that will get approval. And then we will be able to increase the amount of people um, who can come to church. So on the 22nd of August, there will be more people and probably be able to, you won't have to contact Sheila and say, can I come to church? Is there a seat for me that we can, hopefully we can fill the amount, the capacity that we have. Monica, her uh, induction service is on Friday evening. That's Friday the 13th. And she sent me a uh, message last night to say that a Zoom link will be coming out from Highland Presbytery this week so that we can join on Zoom. So watch for an email coming through to you. I think when we get it, then it'll either come out from the office or Sheila will send it out um, so that we can um, be part of Monica's induction into her new charge. So that's the Friday the 13th. And Friday, not Friday, Monday the 16th of August at 12.45, Frida Laird's funeral will be at Kirkcaldy Creme. Kirkcaldy Creme can take 80 people. It will not be live streamed. And Sheila, have you thought on what you wanted? No? Okay. I think that's all the intimations, unless anybody has anything else that uh, we have this week. But if there's things, then do, if you're on email, then 
please do look because Sheila does send things out regularly when things come in and we are getting stuff from Presbytery, but just to keep everybody up to date. But we're going to close this service with our closing hymn, which is May the God of Hope go with us every day. And it's an Argentinian um, melody. So it's quite a, a fast one, but it's a, a it's one of my favourites, so I'm afraid you're getting one of my favourites today. May the God of hope go with us every day. close our service in the way we have been doing for a number of weeks now with the, the Makaton blessings. So do sing and sign as able, please.